Hey everyone, Gary Simon of Corsetro and welcome to this lesson where we're going to continue on with the 100% free course, Developing Ethereum Smart Contracts for Beginners. So in this lesson, we're going to install the Ethereum Test RPC along with Web3.js to create a simple user interface that will allow us to interact with our actual Ethereum smart contract. So if you don't know what the test RPC is and the Web3.js, don't worry, I'm going to describe it very shortly. All right, so the first thing that we want to do is you need to install and run the Ethereum test RPC. So what is that? Well, it's a Node.js Ethereum client for the testing and development of your smart contracts. So it's all based on Node.js, which means, yes, we have to have Node.js installed. So to check whether or not it's installed, open up your command line or console and simply type in node-v and npm-v. Now, if either of these commands go unrecognized, simply visit nodejs.org, click on the downloads button, and then download the appropriate installer for your OS and install it through all of the default options all the way up to the end. And it will include that node packager, node packager manager, uh, which, you know, that's what you need to install the uh, Ethereum test RPC along with Web3. So once it's installed, just reload your console here and then you can rerun these commands and they will be there. Okay, so now what we need to do is install the actual Ethereum JS test RPC. So it doesn't really matter what folder we install this in because we're going to install it globally, which means we can access it from anywhere. So npm install hyphen G for global Ethereum JS test RPC. All right, so this will install momentarily. I didn't actually mean to hit enter when I ran that command because I already have it installed. I don't want to see here, you know, wasting time. So I may end up speeding this up. And going back here. Okay, so once finished, we simply type in test RPC. Okay, and now this provides you with 10 different accounts and their associated private keys along with a local server at uh, localhost 8545. All right, so now what we wanna do is actually install Web3.js. But first, I'm going to open up a new console window. And by the way, a lot of people ask me, you know, what console emulator are you using? I'm using Commander, C-M-D-E-R, it's free, and you can download it yourself. So at the bottom, in the task area, we can just right click, new console, hit start, and there we go. So. I'm gonna hop into my code folder. It's where I store my projects. I'm going to make a new folder called Corsetro ETH. You can name yours whatever you want. We're gonna hop into it. All right, and then we're gonna run npn init, and this will create a package JSON file which will store the project dependencies. So just hit enter through all the different questions. All right, so now we can install Ethereum slash web3.js and then save it with our save flag to the dependencies in package.json. Okay, so now what we wanna do is, if you recall, if you've been following along, we've been working within the Remix IDE, the online-based editor, I we have an environment dropdown where we've been using the JavaScript VM. This is where we wanna change that now. So let's switch over, go ahead to uh, our smart contract here, and this is at remixethereum.org. And this is a smart contract that we created in the previous lesson. And if you're watching this on YouTube, for instance, you can click on the link that will show you the uh, actual written tutorial. You can just copy this and paste it in so you don't have to sit here uh, and, and basically type in it all up from scratch. All right, and what we wanna do now is we'll go ahead and take this from environment and change it to web3 provider. We'll hit okay. And we put in our localhost 8545 and hit okay. All right, great. So now what we wanna do is hit create. And we're gonna come back to this later to copy this address. All right, so now let's go ahead and focus and start working in a code editor. So our code editor, I'm going to use Visual Studio Code. I'm going to open up the folder that we created. 
right here. Okay, so we have our node modules folder and this contains our web3 and also just these two package JSON files. Let's go ahead and create a new file. Oops, we wanna make sure it doesn't create it in there. We'll create it in here called index.html. All right. So also, if you're watching this on uh, YouTube or Udemy, I will try to provide the basic scaffolding that I'm about to put in here. And this is just gonna be a regular HTML file. And I'm going to increase my editor size. So just to make sure everybody can see what is going on. All right, so all that's happening here is we have our basic head tags. And here, the only thing we're referencing is a main.css file, which doesn't yet exist. And also the script source for our web three Ethereum client right here. So this is of course located in our node modules folder. Let's go ahead uh, before I continue describing what else is happening and create that main.css file. Make sure this is down here, let's drag it. And I've also just created some rule sets that will just make it not look absolutely like garbage. And so I'm pasting this in here as well. And again, I will provide the uh, the resource files for you so you can just quickly copy and paste this in. And again, it's just a very basic CSS just to structure this very simple uh, user interface. So going back to the index HTML, just to show you what's happening here in the body tag, we have just a container. Uh, we have of course such instructor, yada, yada. We have just two form inputs. One is going to be for our age and name right here. And then the button ID of button, and when they, that's clicked, we're gonna have stuff happen down here. All right, so we're also using jQuery down here, so we don't have to use straight up JavaScript, make our, our life a little bit easier. Okay, so now what we wanna do is use Web3.js to connect and interact with the actual smart contract. All right, so what we wanna do is right here, we're going to put in if type of web3 is not equal to undefined, then we'll say web3 equals a new web3 and current provider. We'll say else web3 is new web3 a new web three dot providers dot HTTP providers. And this is where you put in our local host because we're running the test RPC. Okay, so what is happening here? Well, basically it's saying that if web three is undefined or not undefined, then we'll use that as our provider right here on line 36. So if it's undefined or else, then we can manually specify the provider. In our case, it's our local host 8545. So you may be wondering how would this up here, Web3, be defined? Well, if you're using a Chrome extension like MetaMask, which we will be using later in this course, or if you're using like an Ethereum browser like Mist, then the provider is automatically injected into the JavaScript context that we can use. So. Again, this still may be a little bit confusing and that's ex expected. You'll understand how this works as we go on. Okay, so next we need to specify a default Ethereum account to use through the Web3 ETH or F dot default account method. So this goes underneath here and we'll put in Web3 dot ETH dot default account equals web3 eth accounts and we'll put in zero as this is an array so remember when we ran that test rpc command in the console well that provides us with the 10 accounts and we're simply choosing the first one to use all right so next we need to use the eth contract method to initialize or create the contract on an address so it accepts one parameter, which is referred to as an ABI or application binary interface. So this ABI, it allows you to call functions and receive data from your smart contract. So it is an interface. 
Now, if we switch back here to our Remix IDE, and we go ahead to Compile, and then click on Details, we'll see down here, if we scroll down, we have our Interface ABI. Right here, it says Copy Value to Clipboard. All right, so that is our ABI that we need. So we're gonna go back here, and underneath the last line that we defined, we'll put in var Corsetro contract equals web3 ETH contract method, and then we paste that entire ABI in there. And it's not too long, but you know, obviously it's a fair amount of data. Okay. Now that we have the interface for interacting with our contract through the core Cetro contract variable, the last thing to do is define the actual contract address. So what we'll do to do that is we'll put in another variable of course Cetro equals, we uh, reference the one from above, Corsetro contract at and then this is where we paste in the contract address from the Remix IDE. So we'll go back here to our Remix. We'll get out of here, go to Run. And when we hit Create, this provides us with that address. So if I just move this over quite a bit, we'll see this little copy to clipboard because that is the address that the contract is at. And we put it right in here in quotes. All right, great. So let's real quickly, console log Corsetro. All right, so let's save this and let's go ahead and I'm gonna right click this, reveal and explore on index.html. It showed up off the side of my screen and I'm gonna bring this over here. And we're gonna hit control shift I to bring out the inspector. And of course I, by accident added a, I made this plural, it's supposed to be HTTP provider. And what we'll do is just go back here real quickly, fix that, sorry about that, we'll save, go back and refresh this. And there we go. All right, so basically this is what we console log. And look right here, we have our get instructor and our set instructor functions that we define in the Remix IDE. All right, so let's go ahead back to Visual Studio Code and we're gonna go right down here. And now that we know we can access this, let's actually give it some context in terms of our form so <clears throat> that we can actually get the instructor name and age and set it. All right, so the first thing we want to do is we'll put in Corsetro and we'll get the instructor first. So get instructor. Now this accepts, accepts a callback function, error result. And then we'll say if there's no error, then we'll put, this is jQuery here, instructor. We'll set the HTML to the result. Now remember, because I, we are returning, let me show you real quick here in the uh, IDE. We're returning two values here. So they come back to us as an array. So we're gonna take the first one, which is the name. All right, and this will be, we're gonna hit plus here to concat, and then we'll put in a uh, parentheses, which will hold the age. So we put result, which, he is the array index of one years old. And let me, there we go. Okay, great. And then we'll simply say else console log the error. All right. And then we'll say on our button click, which has an ID of button on click. All right, inside of here, we'll call Corsetro set instructor and we'll pass in the name val for value. And then also it accepts a second argu argument from 
as an integer which is coming from age. All right, excellent. So if everything was typed out correctly, God willing, we'll go ahead and go back to right here. We're going to refresh it. Now, of course, we didn't yet set it. So what we have to do is set it. And we'll put in for instructor name, I'll just put, uh, I don't want to put my own name because we've been seeing that all the time. We'll put in Brutus. <laughs> and then we'll put an age of 75 years old. He's a really old instructor. So we're going to hit update. Nothing's going to happen at this point. However, if we refresh, there we go. And you can see how these two things are combined. If we go back to the Remix IDE, oops, right here, and... If we hit get instructor, Brutus of 75 down here. All right, so we covered a lot of ground right there. So you may be a little bit confused on some of the aspects, but we are gonna be jumping back uh, into this sort of environment. And we're also gonna be connecting later on in the course to a different test network, which will really simulate the full experience when it comes to you know, setting the Corsetro instructor name uh, because it's not instantaneous uh, in the live environment. It actually takes, you know, either a minute or two for the uh, the network to confirm the transactions. So you're, you'll begin to understand more and more as we go, as you actually start doing more and more. All right. So in the next lesson, we're going to hop back here into Remix, in, which is the Solidity IDE, to learn more because there's a lot more to learn in terms of what it takes to create smart contracts. I'll see you then.